Welcome, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our wonderful audience um, to this live session. Um, today, uh, I'll be hosting you um, through a few slides together um, to, add, to, to diagnose and learn how to become the future workforce uh, of this uh, dynamic economy. Uh, my name is Mazen Gadir. I actually am the director of uh, outreach in, project, in PMI UAE chapter, as well as I work in the digital health space for the last 21 years. Um, welcome again to the digital transformation and the future workforce. Um, uh, and today I'm gonna focus on healthcare digital disruption and what we've seen in the health economy. So um, I think without any further ado, I just wanna show you a bit of my learning uh, journey. I have been um, uh, a long life and I'm still a long life student, uh, learning always. Uh, and I think that is something the, uh, what, I've, what I've actually realized, the characteristics of the workforce of the future is to ever, uh, to, uh, to be an everlasting uh, student. So continuous learning, unlearning and relearning is a huge characteristics of the the, the workforce of the future. And that's why I just wanted to share with you some of my journey uh, in the digital health space, specifically across the globe from the US all the way to Europe and the Middle East. Um, and again, uh, the idea of continuous learning is the message that I got from sharing my journey. Um, today, I have a very brief outline and hopefully this will last us around uh, 27 minutes. Uh, of presentation and uh, we're going to talk about leadership and innovation and, and you can see that I'm landing you immediately in the hot topic of leadership and innovation. A characteristic of the, uh, the workforce of the future is individual leadership and there are different types of leadership. The modest leadership, there is the servant leadership, there's the humble leadership and, and these are the characteristics of the workforce of the future, regardless to what industry you are in. And then I'm going to talk to you about digital transformation or if I, I like to use the word acceleration, because in the pandemic world, in the post pandemic world now in the new normal, we are going to talk about digital acceleration, the fast pace of digital innovation and how we adopt so quickly now as we are uh, become have as, as we've become very prone to pandemics and future uh, disasters. Disruptions in the healthcare, and that's the use case or the case study that I'd like to share with you and then concluding remarks with uh, hopefully some uh, availability for you to submit and connect with me on LinkedIn or uh, through the uh, chat to drop your messages. So let's start with the first time. So uh, first topic, uh, deep diving into the, the most important element of the future of the workforce. And, and, and here I'm referencing um, uh, the pulse of the profession, a beautiful um, and an amazing, uh, very rich in content publication that came out of the PMI um, um, uh, thought leadership, it, it's showing you what are some of the most important aspects. And I encourage the audience to download this, but I wanna show you also how how uh, some uh, two two specific questions that caught my eye is the priority of uh, of organizational culture uh, as the survey indicates. Uh, number one is customer value. In Africa, um, um, this has uh, is a, a characteristics of the of the dynamic nature of the African continent and the economies that are coming out of economies of scale that are coming out of the continent. And that's why customer value and uh, customer satisfaction is number, number one uh, priority for any organizational culture. And you can see that in a lot of good examples in Africa. And I've seen, for example, in healthcare, uh, the concepts of the, the use of digital innovation to achieve customer satisfaction. Obviously, the alignment with organizational values and the flexibility. And Africa is a continent that uh, brings in innovation by taking shortcuts. Uh, we've been looking at Africa and great examples in Africa, uh, Rwanda, Ghana, um, um, uh, um, a lot of good countries and a lot of good examples for innovation uh, in the digital transformation to achieve customer satisfaction. On the other hand, the second question I caught my eye is basically, how would you describe the change in your business over the past 12 months compared to the 12 months prior to that? And that's in the post-pandemic world. Digital transformation has become number one <clears throat> um, um, uh, uh, significant <clears throat> change. 
and you can see that the, the, there is statements that the best CIO that has happened in the in the in the in the history of digital transformation is uh, COVID nineteen because this has uh, made it a reality of life that now digital is part of is a huge enabler to our uh, growth and existence survivability and sustainability. So I just wanted to point out these two questions uh, and the report is full of amazing research that could be also um, 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 looked at. Uh, coming back to the importance of uh, obviously change management and how this characterizes the futuristic skills that we require. The people skills and what we call the power skills um, uh, that is emphasized from the thought leadership coming out of Project Management Institute shows that the important thing, the growth mindset, how do you assign responsibility and accountability when you execute tasks, the importance of solutions and problem solving, and then the importance of being structured, organized, um, um, in, in man managing your tasks. And this is very important. As you know, change management maturity improves or, or ensures the continuous improvement in any organization. And that's one of the most important characteristics of the, uh, the, the workforce of the future, uh, being change champions. Whether, wherever industry, you change champions or change management is an important skill set that grows uh, with every individual in every industry. The people side uh, uh, of managing projects, of executing, of handling activities is always the most important. Hence, the, the emphasis on communication, uh, information, and uh, the structure and organizational um, um, uh, culture and how this uh, affects the culture of change. So what, what I want to emphasize in this slide, definitely uh, the, the, the importance of, um, of uh, the people side. And you can see now in the pandemic uh, era, we are suffering from the misinformation, what we call infodemic. So the importance of uh, uh, communicating the right information to the right people at the right time is a skill set that is encompassed within change management, which I believe is the characteristic of the future workforce uh, that we are seeing as we speak today. Um, the fact that you are able to um, unlearn and learn and what pandemics have taught us in the past 12 months or 16 months that we are able to pick up skills um, on a very flexible manner. And the idea of trying to um, go through change management, this curve, as you see it, uh, indicates the, the, the change management or the personal um, adaptability to change um, uh, in a normal uh, circumstances, but I think pandemic has argued that this curve now has become has become a little bit flatter because the, there is no time now to 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 deny to get into denial or get into anger and blame. There is no time; it's quickness. So you can see that the curve has become a, a, a little less steeper than this. And I believe the pandemic, the post-pandemic research will prove this: that there is due to the uh, to the, uh, the the speed of change, we we are able to uh, go from shock to problem solving in a very small uh, space of time. So, uh, and and that's the idea: is the workforce of the future is able to move from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence in a, a very short um, um, manner. And and the idea is use the tools that you have, the, the, the revolution uh, that has come through the internet, the ability to actually connect us. And uh, to be honest, the digital transformation that has enabled us to connect each other um, or, or connect with each other during the pandemic has might be the reason why mentally we've, we, we might come out superior. We might come out um, uh, more, um, uh, uh, more intact with less damage or less, um, um, uh, less, um, I guess, uh, less, uh, less uh, uh, negative um, uh, 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 circumstances or negative uh, outcomes. So again, and I think that's that's the 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 again the importance of digital transformation and uh, how the workforce of the future is able to uh, maneuver through this this curve. So uh, again, the, the, just to emphasize, change is an important mindset, uh, uh, and as you go from uh, change is news to wow this is the new way of working it has become now very uh, challenged very shortened in the sense that uh, less uh, stress or perhaps less um, 
um, time to get stressed, to, to go into the blame circle or go through the denial uh, phase. And, and, and what I wanna show is the three motivators to engage a discretionary effort. And again, and I believe this is at the heart of the workforce of the future um, uh, mindset, where you, you are, people are now uh, become um, masters in what they do, right? Uh, uh, they have uh, developed experience and expertise in a certain area uh, due to the availability of learning and education and also remote working and remote access. Uh, autonomy, you, due to the, uh, uh, to the fact that we are now working from home more, uh, uh, more than we used to, autonomous uh, decision-making and uh, flexibility in the way you handle your, uh, your activities and tasks has become uh, the name of the game, where the individual sense of responsibility and dedication has been uh, uh, the subject of the new uh, uh, era, post-pandemic uh, characteristics of the workforce of the future. And then a purpose. What, what the pandemic has made us do is close upon, I mean, close on, on ourselves and think and reflect because we've, we had to live through lockdowns. And this has made us realize the sense of purpose, whether it's uh, the fact that uh, uh, you know, your work-life balance has been uh, challenged and now you're thinking about uh, your health, your family and the work-life balance, the mental um, uh, uh, stability of the workforce of the future has been now revised as we come out of this pandemic. So it's very important that the workforce of the future thinks of these three motivators, mastery, autonomy, and purpose. And, and coming back again to, to the fact that uh, every individu individual in the futuristic workforce will have, a, will have to be a cultural leader, not only a change champion, but also a cultural leader in the area that you are always aligned with people's um, 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 uh, expectation and hence having that big picture view. Uh, assumptions, you are always uh, assuming um, um, certain items as you as you engage with people and the sense of optimism, the positivity and the positive energy to drive and empower uh, your team, your surroundings, your family to actually show hope. And this has now become an important element of the, the workforce of the future. And then outcomes because without outcomes, you're not able to measure. And if you cannot measure, you are not able to improve. And this is very important. It's outcome-driven mentality and frameworks has become more the norm of the, the future of the workforce, where you always look at uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, or um, outcome uh, performance indicators, or outcome indicators, right? Leadership incorporates elements of cultural change, where now individual leaders have to think about the systems, how to communicate. And that's why the art of storytelling is one of the most important skill set that the, the workforce of the future uh, should have and should entail. And then being a role model, uh, behavior uh, excellence, uh, individual um, uh, alleviation, and individual um, uh, mastery, as well as communication with the people. Uh, and that's why you'll see the rise of the modest and uh, uh, and the servant leadership uh, skill set and mindset. So again, it's very important to understand the the ecosystem uh, of how you manage uh, 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 leadership from these three different angles. And that's why, as a leadership uh, uh, skill set, emotional intelligence is one of the upcoming and most important topics, hot topics of the uh, of of this. Uh, era of this new era, specifically as we are driving the future workforce into more um, um, leadership positions, into more uh, leadership skill set, uh, to work autonomously, to actually become uh, leaders in their field, no matter how how um, how you are positioned in the org structure, you are a leader in your own uh, self. And again, uh, the the beauty of some of the frameworks that I'm going to share with you specifically uh, from a leadership and a team perspective uh, that makes 
an ultimate um, um, uh, uh, workforce of the future so effective, right? So team stands for this framework is very interesting. And I, I would love you to uh, download this book. It's called the McKinsey Engagement. Uh, again, it has a, a wonderful number of advice and suggestions and reading um, um, points that you can actually alleviate and, and indulge as you grow uh, and you grow with your team. So team stands for talk. And again, the importance of uh, communication, evaluate the importance of feedback and the circle of feedback. And this is very important as we get into uh, our teams uh, remotely or in, in, in person. Uh, and then the, the concept of assistance, how you support each other, how you create a learning environment within your teams. And then the concept of motivation. So you can see emotional intelligence spread across uh, these four pillars of the team framework, the team for uh, team framework. And then if you go down to the focus where you actually look at framing and the idea of actually uh, identifying and approaching problems with the right questions, organizing and structuring your response and yourself, uh, putting a team plan, putting an idea of how you can break a big problem into smaller pieces to uh, tackle it. Uh, and then the collection and a collection uh, of, of information and data and the reliance of current state assessments and interviews and, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, research. And then trying to understand and analyze the use of dashboards, the use of analytical tools, and then synthesize to generate the diagnosis and the, and the solution. So, and, and this is very important. That's why I spend uh, a lot of time in the first section, because this sits at the heart of the workforce of the future, specifically for a continent like Africa, where you have uh, a lot of uh, um, um, uh, great uh, uh, potential specifically from the upcoming uh, uh, young uh, uh, individuals, the youth, the power of the youth in Africa, as it, as it, it reinvests itself and it rebrands itself as the continent of opportunities. Now, coming to the digital transformation, and always I refer back to the pulse of the profession because in the pulse of profession, there is a huge emphasis on how to equip the workforce of the future in this uh, project economy. And one of the areas, one of the great questions that I've, I've, I've seen as well in that, uh, in that report is how often do project teams at your organization leverage each of the following uh, 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 technologies in the management of projects. So you can see cloud solutions by far has enhanced, uh, uh, has increased the use of cloud, the use of IOTs has increased between the last 12 months into the next 12 months, for example. Uh, and, and I want to I wanna share with you these important technologies. These are enablers from cloud solutions, AI to um, 5G and the concepts and the importance of 5G. And this is very important as we see uh, a lot of African countries are embarking upon uh, um, technologies to try and um, uh, you know, to 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 uh, to do to leapfrog uh, the continents of Europe and North America, specifically in um, in in some uh, Eastern and Western countries, uh, Eastern and Western African countries. So again, and the second question is how high a priority is enterprise-wide adoption, and and that that shows you that one of the most important priorities is the complex problem-solving tools and techniques. You know, from mind map tools to uh, all the tools that we have available for us over the internet, uh, the likes of Trello's and whatnot. So again, these are equips uh, or equipment or tools that is uh, that is available for the works of the future, workforce of the future to to uh, to marry uh, with the the huge disruption that is happening in the industrial uh, fourth re uh, or the fourth re uh, industrial revolution. As you see, um, um, this is a very great slide that I got from a previous PMI presentation um, that shows that as as project economy shoots up in, in post-2020 era, we are looking at exponential growth. Uh, now, the, 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 the digital disruption and the digital acceleration is becoming a reality. Uh, where, where that's hence the title, the mother of all digital transformation. And we, haven't see, we, we will see a smaller uh, period between the fourth industrial revolution and the fifth, and hence between, and hence between the fifth industrial revolution and the sixth. And yet to see uh, concepts like the quantum uh, computing and nanotechnology coming into play. And again, the rise of gig economy at the moment, as we are coming into the post-millennial uh, generations, right? We are looking at now a lot of freelancing 
concepts. Uh, as the workforce of the future become more agile, they are able to work on smaller contracts and they are able to move around for patient. Long gone, long, uh, gone the days where we used to uh, we used to uh, work on uh, on uh, on uh, you know many years uh, in one corporation. Now comes the new days of of gig economy. So it's very important to understand the, the definition of project economy uh, uh, as we are now getting into new economic models of, of, of disruption. And that's why uh, uh, the importance of, for example, uh, uh, the characteristics of uh, futuristic workforce, uh, looking at organizational change from a different perspective, looking at how project management needs to reinvent itself, uh, the use of the marriage between agile and waterfall concepts. And, and again, I'm referring you back to a great uh, uh, a great publication by Deloitte, where it actually looks at uh, the preparation for corporations and companies to adopt technologies. And it has done a fantastic job in analyzing what are the main three questions or to ask each company on are they prepared to adopt technologies or not. And this is very important as it is it at is as it unfolds a lot of the new technologies that will be uh, incorporated in the upcoming uh, years. And 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 again, this is uh, uh, this publication shows the importance of organi organizational culture in adopting and utilizing technology as an enabler. And what this publication does, it actually looks at technologies in four pillars. So the, it, it divides technologies and digital um, tools into enablers, into foundational disruptors and hor horizon next. And if you look at enablers, and again, uh, uh, that's what we have been indulging in from you know the concepts of digital experience. You hear about user experience, customer experience tools and whatnot to try and mirror and build the journey, analytics and advanced analytics into cloud-based cloud solution. Uh, foundational, this has become uh, 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 an important uh, aspect that is adopted across organization from business technologies, uh, looking at, uh, uh, you know, um, re-engineering of the process, risk management and mitigation, specifically cybersecurity, and then the modern modernization of, of your core solutions and core business solutions. And then disruptors, it looks at the, uh, you know, virtual reality and digital reality, cognitive uh, uh, automation and cognitive uh, machine learning, a blockchain and the utilization of uh, blockchain. There is a lot of content now that just uh, in Gardner now, a lot of webinars are coming in on the applicability of blockchain because it hasn't yet materialized and the use cases that you can have. And then the horizon next where you come in on to expo exponential intelligence, quantum and nanotechnology and the experience, the ambient experience uh, um, uh, vehicle or vertical. So. And this is a wonderful mind map that you can look at, where you can see the technologies uh, with, that you will uh, that are in the current market at the market at the moment, uh, and that will exist within the next two years, uh, as well as what you will see between two to five years, the emerging technologies and the future technologies. This one, uh, this will serve you as a mind map to see how digital transformation is happening and how you are pushing boundaries. Um, the second, uh, I mean, uh, the, the next section that I want to also share with you is the disruption in the healthcare um, industry or ecosystem in the Middle East. And this is my use case or case study that I'd like to share with you because I've seen this change quite a lot. And why am I using the Middle East? Because of its closeness to the African continent and the uh, African economy, specifically healthcare. And you can see that the, a lot of the healthcare projects in the digital transformation aspect has been pushing the boundaries. We're seeing countries like Egypt, Gabon, Ethiopia, Rwanda are developing digital health innovation and digital health strategies um, to try and look at cost effectiveness, sustainability, how do you pay for healthcare, digitizations and whatnot, specifically public health, you know, pandemic, uh, uh, pandemic uh, management systems and solutions, uh, communicable and non-communicable diseases. So uh, let me share with you uh, an example of a vision that came out from the UAE where the leadership buy-in is is an important aspect of digital transformation. And that's why the regarding of human beings, the most important resource to any economy is the human beings. And that's why the, the, this is an example of uh, how economies and industries will be built around 
uh, the citizens or the human being in any uh, country. And, and, and the idea is, as you drive technology in countries like the UAE, for example, in the Middle East, you are always pushing the boundaries. You are getting into, for example, a new disruption. You're talking about uh, digital health in space medicine, for example. You're looking at how to prolong life expectancy. You're looking at use, uh, using artificial intelligence to try and predict to trying to push and again there are some great examples coming out of uh, africa in the digital health innovation and how the healthcare uh, is adopting the future workforce uh, mentality uh, and again this is again another innovation framework that i'm giving you i'm sharing with you is what uh, dubai health authority came out with an innovation strategy to imp to, to, to emphasize the importance of uh, uh, workforce education, uh, enablement, cultural transformation, to try and drive innovation in healthcare, in the healthcare scene in Dubai, for example. And that's an, a great example that could actually emphasize the importance of cultural transformation. What I'm also wanna, I also want to focus on is what would be the disruption in healthcare. The concepts of value-based care and customer satisfaction drives digital transformation, drives workforce enablement and workforce transformation because the amount of uh, you know amount of uh, new themes that are popping up you know uh, sensing technologies uh, the computational capabilities interactiveness and user interface hyper connectivity and and so on and so forth and this enables us to build this value based framework in healthcare economy to drive the right living, the right care, the right provider, the right value, and the right innovation. And by the way, you can take these principles and apply it in all the other industries as well. So in conclusion, what I'd like to do is what would be the takeaways as you've seen we've gone through leadership uh, and the importance of change management and, and uh, uh, gro mind, uh, growth mindset we looked at the digital acceleration key concepts publications from Deloitte and the pulse of the profession uh, to try and show you the importance of digital enablers and then coming into a use case from the uh, from the healthcare industry across the Middle East <clears throat> takeaways again as the future unfolds, we are seeing um, uh, we are uh, we are uh, speed in a, in a very uh, fast uh, manner. We are moving from the fourth industrial revolution into the fifth and the sixth. So there will be a huge um, um, shift between the between the different layers of industrial revolution. And, and we are seeing now the, the concepts of gig economy and project economy popping up. And that's what the workforce of the future needs to be uh, uh, aware of, how to uh, catch up with the pace, whether it's the use of artificial intelligence, quantum computing, nanotechnology and whatnot. And how can we implement this into case studies in Africa. Um, the concepts of leading versus managing and how you can actually build individuals as leaders and as managers in one in one arena, right? And this is a fantastic uh, um, uh, reference here uh, that allows you to um, uh, see the importance of marrying both skill sets individually. Uh, and then the concepts of how you become uh, you know, um, from a conventional manager-centered leadership to subordinate-centered leadership, where you are autonomous in your decision-making, you are enabling and empowering others. And this is a fantastic uh, figure that shows you uh, uh, the leadership continuum. And I'd love you to reference it as well and look at some of the referenceability or references that uh, talks about this continuum. And again, you can see that in pandemics, post-pandemics, the subordinate-centered leadership uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, survives and it becomes more attractive uh, to create a harmo uh, ha uh, harmonious uh, um, uh, work environment. So I always want to remind you with a caveat uh, as a final thought, uh, um, you know, uh, what sort of leadership would you actually want to become or wh what sort of leader would you want to become and how you actually can uh, present yourself as a role model. Um, and that's why it all reflects or it all comes from your inner self. And, and the, uh, the Ikagi or Ikigai, the Ikigai um, uh, concept is, is a beautiful uh, framework that you can utilize uh, uh, because before, I mean, without having a purpose 
or a reason for being, uh, you are not able to present yourself as a role model. So it's, it all starts from within. Is it your passion? Is it your mission? Is it your vocation? Or is it your profession? And how do you uh, bring this out to become a role model leadership? So I think with this, I appreciate your, um, your listening and I hope this was useful to you. Please do not hesitate to connect. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and reflect with you uh, outside um, um, uh, the conference if you need. Thank you.